Welcome one and all, I'm Decoy, and I'm back with a bunch more cool and unique camp locations for you. Now these are spots that are already going to have structures in place, possibly some workbenches, generally just cool stuff that's going to set your camp aside. Now the first location I have for you, I've nicknamed this place the Cat House. One indication is all these cat bowls laying around, there are a lot of them. But the real reason why it's named this is looking at this couch going, Oh my god, that's a cat head. Oh god, that's a lot of cat heads. It does make me wonder though, what was going on here before the bombs fell? Was this place owned by a serial killer that just liked to mount cat heads on the wall? Or perhaps it was just the crazy cat lady. There's no telling. Now I am kind of disappointed with the dining room since a couple of the chairs have tipped over. It's just a waste of space. You got a nice little front porch though. Already set up with some chairs. The upstairs though leaves much to be desired. As there are decent sized holes up here that you can fall through. Also a lot more cat heads. It is kind of creepy. Interesting, but creepy. Unfortunately, the bed has, or the mattress slid off of that bed. But you do have quite a few different containers up here that you can loot. Of course, you had the little toy truck. That'll get you some screws, right? The master bedroom has some, some room to work with, but that demolished bed right there just really screws that up. And yeah, more cat bowls. Those things are everywhere. Now we head outside for one of the other things that helps set this spot apart. This barn. Now off to the left of the barn, there are quite a few tato plants growing over here. So at least if you move here, you've already got some crops in place that you don't have to worry about planting. Now the barn has doors on both ends. And they were locked by a level zero lock, if I am remembering correctly. But it was full of feral ghouls. And it made me think. I was like, man, this reminds me of Walking Dead. Except there was no little girl inside. Little ghoul inside. Ha ha ha. Now if you do want to move here, this is going to be closer towards... Top middle of the forest, I guess. And it's going to put you right here. I feel like it's a fairly decent spot. Forest wise. Next, moving into Toxic Valley with an insanely cool windmill. This thing is freaking huge. You can't miss it. Now, running from the giant windmill, they're basically like power pylons. Okay, to be fair, they're not actually power pylons. It's like a post with several power connectors on it. Which got me to wondering, does this place actually generate power? Now, sadly, I wasn't able to figure that out because I couldn't move my camp here at the time because it really needed to be somewhere else for a different video. But if you do move here and figure that out, please let us all know. If nothing else, it is free power connectors just hanging out, which is always nice. Now one downside is going to be all that junk just laying around the outside. Might screw with some of your building. But as you make your way up top, you will find junk that you can actually pick up and scrap. You got a nice little mix of things up here from your adhesive to lead-based paint. Mmm, delicious lead-based paint. Tastes so good. Should probably stop eating it though. Nah, it's too delicious. Now you also have an armor workbench, which is always nice, and a nice little flat area for you to place some other items that you would like. Now, at one point, I did attempt to climb all the way to the top using marsupial, but I just had no luck. Now, I do think quite a few of you will enjoy this, because apparently the Raider Windmill from the previous video was a fairly decent hit. Now, you'll find this up here, which will also put you close to the Grafton train station, which being close to a, a train station is always a plus in my book. Now, let's head over to the Savage Divide. And if that spike shooting up in the air tells you anything, this is more of a raider style location than anything else. It also has a really large footprint map wise. I 
don't think you'll be able to fit the whole thing in your camp. I wouldn't even attempt it. But you are going to get a lot of cool stuff depending on where you put your camp in the area. Now there's going to be plenty of little junk items that you can scrap, which is always good. going to be some dead bodies laying around. And another thing you need to know is enemies can spawn here. Always something you're going to have to worry about. But hey, there's free food. And honestly, who would turn down free food? Free food is awesome. Now you will get uh, leather here. There's plenty of that. There's also severed heads. Which severed heads? Awesome. I mean, for a raider location, I'm pretty sure it's a requirement to have them. It's on page one of the raider handbook, Decapitated Heads. That's all it says. Now there are some ammo boxes laying around, which is another plus. More containers to loot, but this spot right here is really what made me take notice of this area. I went, hey, I could see when me and my buddies take a little break, us just sitting around the burn barrel, just hanging out. Thought that was pretty cool. Now, one downside for this location is that it, it puts you up closer towards the top of the map, which some people might not really enjoy. Also, I'm pretty sure right off that cliff edge, when I found this place originally and jumped off the cliff, I found a dead witch down there that had plans for a full witch costume, in case any of you are looking for that. But you will find this location right up here, right above possibly the most sought-after workshop in the game. Now let's head down to the ash heap, where I found a cozy little cabin that also has water right there with it. Because I know some of you just refuse to live anywhere that doesn't have water. Not only that, but when you head inside the cabin, you do have a cooking station already set up and a couple little wood piles just to help you cook. There is some food that can spawn in here. A decent little amount of junk. Not a, not a lot, but a little bit. I mean, anything's nice, right? There is a container that you can search. Keep your fingers crossed on getting something good. Preferably not pre-war money. Now, out in the pond, though, you will find a level 2 safe for you to loot. Hopefully something good inside. Now this spot did have robots walking around, and I ended up having to kill them right before recording. But I don't see that as a downside. I see that as, hey, thanks for bringing me the extra scrap, guys. I appreciate that, that hard work you put in. Now if you would like to live here, this is going to keep you on the edge of the ash heap almost. And in a fairly decent spot, you're not too far away from fast traveling to different train stations. Or White Spring if you're heading that direction. Now let's head over to the mire, where I've got a treehouse for you. Because I know some of you really like the treehouse location I had in my taming video. I went, I gotta bring them another treehouse. Help bring them down out of that top corner of the map. Now because it is the mire, you are gonna have water here, which is always a plus. And really, it's just nice having a treehouse down further. It's really going to help you on those fast travels. Now you do get an ammo box right here. And a beer bottle for whoever needs that. But keep an eye out for this trap. Because it's just chilling, waiting on you. Now you do get a little bit of space that you can actually build right there. But I can envision a turret on this part I'm standing on now. As we continue our way up. I do kind of like the top floor of this treehouse as opposed to the previous one. Because I just feel like you got more space for creativity up here. Now there are a few containers you can loot. But the key thing that caught my eye up here is this stand up. Because I saw it and I went, why the heck can't I build that? I want to build that at my camp. I want those as a craftable item. Dang it. But either way, getting past that. It does look like a pretty cool location to put your camp. Now you will find it right here. It does bring you down the mire a decent amount from where the previous spot was. But you're still above like the halfway point on the map. Now down to the Cranberry Bog where I've got this lovely monorail car for you. It's got stairs going all the way up to it to make life easier. Now when you first get here though, 
There's likely going to be some glowing mole rats that you'll have to deal with, but deal with that issue like you would anything in Fallout, with violence. Because here, violence solves everything. Now when you finally make your way to the top, you'll see that it's opened up. You will find a first aid kit inside, a radio, some vodka, a bed that will give you diseases, some salt, and the real key thing here is a dead body. Because I wouldn't want you to get too lonely. Just grab your little teddy bear right there, go cuddle up with the dead person, you, you'll be feeling better in no time. Or you'll be completely insane. It's one of the two. Now, one thing I really did like about this spot was the view. You get a lot of nice little views from inside the, the train car. I'm not sure exactly how a camp would revolve around this, but I imagine it would be pretty dang cool. Now, this will wrap up the unique camp locations I have for you this week. But don't worry, there was such a, a nice turnout from the previous video that I plan to do another one again next week to give you even more options. Hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to like, sub, and share. Later!